How's it going? Yet another weekend. Um, I remembered I have long sleeve shirts. This one, Twin Peaks, Firewalk with me, uh, the uh, rocking pattern. I just keep forgetting. I'm pretty sure I've got an Akira one as well. And like, it's the best time to wear them because in Australia, it's the middle of bloody winter. And uh, I'm wearing more jumpers now, which is bizarre, but ugh, this, this one's a bit, bit baggy. <laughs> It, it's almost, almost too long. Anyway, uh, obviously, uh, we got more mail. Last week's was a hell of a haul, and half of that, um, most of it, I, it wasn't even the stuff that was in the videos that came right after. Obviously, I got my stuff from Umbrella, and I got the stuff from Dead End, uh, not from uh, from Outrun DVD. Um, I've gone to JB as well, so uh, let's dive into it. Now, obviously, for the full unboxing ones for Umbrella, I you can obviously watch the videos, but I'll I'll just make note of it here that I have them. You can go check it out just in case you didn't notice that those videos were out, which they are, and it's great. So, yeah. Anyway, which means that this week's will be a lot shorter. So obviously, we got the uh, lizard in a woman's skin, the Lucio Fulci film. This is the limited edition set. Um, obviously unboxing review is all on a different video. This one was a fun one to get because I really love Lucio Fulci's works. I think he's my favorite Italian director. It used to be Argeno, but then I started watching Fulci and I'm like, oh shit, Fulci's great. Um, one of my favorites already, and I've only seen it the once and I'm like, holy crap, and it's a great, it's just a great presentation of the film and there's a special feature which dives so well into like what the film's actually about in terms of its surrealism. It's wonderful. So you don't need a limited release, but I would highly suggest it because it's so goddamn beautiful. Yeah, outside of the, the nudity that I cannot show. Uh, but yeah, no, I don't think there's anything else worth mentioning about this, but it's, it's definitely a very amazing set. So love it. <laughs> the same day, annoyingly, uh, this came in the raid 4k set um again separate video elsewhere my annoyance with getting these two which wasn't a bad thing because i was i got them both in i'm like look some people have made videos on this but no one's made a video on the lizard and woman skin so i'll do that did my unboxings went to watch this one first because at least i could watch it with it you know using all the speakers it being loud and whatever until eventually my parents would get home so i'd put in earbuds whatever but Unfortunately, the Dolby Vision started playing up, and my TV kept thinking that my Blu-ray player was a goddamn uh, Nintendo Switch, so it kept putting up this game optimizer thing, and I was like, where's filmmaker mode? I want to go back to filmmaker mode. Became this whole thing. Uh, long story short, outside of rebooting both my player and my TV, and then updating them both as well, which I think might benefit me in the long run, because it's, it, it's gotten rid of the game optimizer thing. It doesn't, my TV doesn't think the Panasonic's a video game anymore. Um, I learned the hard way that I've pulled a Mandela effect. The uh, LG OLED that I have, Gallery 2 Edition, does not have Dolby Vision Filmmaker mode. Never existed. Ever. It only ever had filmmaker mode for HDR content, the HDR 10 or whatever, and standard definition, so SDR. Which is insane to me. I always thought Dolby Vision has, has filmmaker mode. No, it doesn't. It has cinema mode and the other ones. It has like four, standard, vivid, cinema, home, and cinema. So I've put it onto cinema. I've adjusted the settings so it doesn't have like any issues, whatever. And to be fair, I think Cinema Home has the weird lagging effect that I was getting on some of those Blue Underground releases where it would ghost have a ghosting effect, or at least when it would cut to the next shot, it would have a, like, semi, like a weird jolt. So, yeah, I've had to calibrate the TV now, which is bizarre. I don't know how I've gone this long without realizing that there were problems with that. Uh, either way, fixed now. The Raid was able to finish the rest of it. Looks great. I don't know if it's too dark or if my TV was too bright, but I would, I'd flick between. I'm like, the brightness just looks unnaturally bright. Even though I can see everything clearer, it looks unnaturally bright. So, yeah. And also that made the uh, subtitles exceptionally bright. Uh, so I had to turn all that stuff off and just have it be as whatever brightness it's already been set to, as in the disc has been set to. And so now I can read the subtitles without it blinding me. Life is fun. Um, anyway, obviously got those two reviews out. That was chaos. I'll show the JB stuff because of one of the other things I've also done a video review on, so I'll leave that for later because I don't want you to think that this whole video is just, I've seen all that stuff. He's already talked about it. Yeah, I rushed out video reviews and rushed out, but still actually put in the time and effort and did all the thingies. Luckily for the raid, I've already seen it. So I like, if I'm going to do a Blu-ray review, I want to see the movie 
and then watch the special features. That's why I haven't done my Scorsese set yet, because I haven't seen any of those films before, and it would be really annoying to have to dive into all of it when I can't, I don't understand the film yet. It wouldn't make any sense. Anyway, I got Challenges, retail goddamn price. I just wanted to get it. I love this movie. It's my favorite film of the year so far. It sucks as a Blu-ray release. Uh, whether it looks and sounds good is, oh, it's got Dolby Atmos, that's nice. Um, it probably looks and sounds amazing. That's an obvious. But the thing is, outside of a purple disc, which is really nice, and it's actually got like these lines in it, so it's kind of got a tennis ball-y effect, see there? Yeah, the curvatures. It's a tennis ball, but it's purple. Um, you know, it's it's not a bad release. I just realized that my image has gone bright orange. I don't even love that. It has no special features. Obviously, there's been no 4K release anywhere, which I had looked up and then realized, right, they're not doing a 4K release, but it's bare bones. No special features, no commentary, no nothing. The best film of the year, and it's got a nothing in terms of any kind of regard, which is absolutely pathetic. So if there is another eventual release of this film with special features and or a 4K, probably not a 4K. If it's a 4K of no special features, I won't get it. But if it's a 4K with special features, I will get it because I love this film. I like all of Luca's films, so, you know, can't lose there. Bones and All is really good as well if you haven't seen it. He's it felt very buried by COVID, so um, highly worth recommending. There's a few, JB Hi-Fi has a few new films. They're older releases, like 10 to 15 years old, but they've re-released a bunch of a catalogue. I think some of them are Warner Brothers releases. I was notified on the JB page. Um, they're all like $13, like $12.98. So I got Romeo and Juliet, uh, because I didn't, well, Romeo plus Juliet, because I've never seen it, and, you know, we never watched this in high school, we only watched the good one, at least I can say it's the good one, because it's the only one I've seen, the, um, the one from the 60s. <laughs> this is a 2012 release, so the fact that this is now, I, I'm pretty sure this is being re-released, if not, I just have it now, because I found it, and I was like, sure, why not? There was a couple of other re-releases, like Malcolm X, and, uh, like, Falling Down and stuff like that. Most of them I either have on DVD or I've gotten UK releases, so I wasn't too particular on getting those, but they're, they're back. But now, I'm pretty sure this is, this is 20th Century Fox, so the fact that this is in stores is, like, interesting. So I think those were, like, Paramount or something. I don't know what those, those ones were, but this is 20th Century Fox. I have to note that it's 20th Century Fox because... Uh, oh, it's, it's Warner Brothers. It's Warner Brothers releases. Uh, the next one is a Warner Brothers release. Um, obviously, because in Australia, they're not doing... Disney uh, isn't releasing any more movies here. So, of course, 20th Century Fox films are not getting releases. So, I don't know if they just happen to found, like, a bunch of old releases and they're just re-releasing them. I don't know what the hell's going on. But they're here and I'm taking whatever advantages I can. Alternatively, um, Contact... Uh, I didn't have this at all. I didn't even have a DVD for this or Romeo plus Juliet. I had to text mum and be like, hey, do we have any of these movies? And she's like, uh, no. Because this one is like always on TV. So I figured I might as well get it. And it comes with three commentaries, four special effects featurettes, three vintage featurettes, music only audio track for the 5.1 and then theatrical trailers. So yeah, you know, it's still the old basic old release and whatever, but apparently it's better than the old DVD, for one thing. It's a 2009 release. Like, this has been re-released from 2009, it doesn't have new packaging or anything, it's just re-released. Yeah, I don't know, it's a strange thing, but I'll, I'll take what I can get, because I don't have them. I also haven't seen all of Contact before, so I think I have, but who knows. Anyway, I got from Outrun DVD, Shark, because... I don't know, I felt like it, uh, no, it's a Burt Reynolds for one thing, but it's an animal eco-horror, which has a video essay by Lee Gambin, which was the reason I wanted to get it. I literally just looked up on their website, hey, what films do you guys have that has, you know, Lee's name on it? Uh, the reversible artwork just has the, um, PG, the classification sticker. Um, and yeah, so I looked it up, and his name, and this was the only release that came out, so I was like, it's 20 bucks, I'll take it. I mean, I'm on a Burt Reynolds binge, so, I guess unintentionally. I watched Rent-A-Cop the other day. Not a great film, but a great transfer. Lee's commentary, of course. And then we have The Boy and the Heron, which I do have just found out, I think, yesterday that they are Madman, I think, is doing a 4K UHD for this in Australia. Um, so, okay. Uh, slightly different packaging, but, you know, I have done a Blu-ray review, a 4K review, in fact, on this, but this does have you know, exclusive features, at least I'm pretty sure it does. Um, 
I don't know. I don't know yet what the Australian edition is going to come out with, but I'm curious. But I've done a Blu-ray review on this, which comes with a poster, special features, all that stuff. So feel free to check that out as well. It's like 13 minutes long. Literally filmed it on the day I had to go out for the weekend. So <laughs> that one was a rushed review. Um, but it worked. Uh, but yeah, so... I don't know. Um, I'm curious to see if the Boyne Heron gets anything different in Australia. Uh, like, if we get no special features whatsoever, that wouldn't surprise me because Madman's very bare bones with most of their releases, hence why I've usually stuck to importing, like, so many films that Madman has that I'm like, ah, I can get it for, like, a bit more expensive from overseas, but it comes with special features. Like, it's not just a basic $30 package. It's, hey, here's 40 to 45 bucks, and it's also maybe a Criterion or a video or something. So, Anatomy of a Fool is one of them. So, as much as Madman has the better artwork, uh, they have no special features. So, yeah. Anyway, I don't know how long my battery has left, so I'm kind of trying to rush this a little bit as well. Lucky last... Two, which I actually didn't expect as soon as they came in, but they came in early, which is nice. Um, as in, they came in before this video was meant to be released. Uh, so we have, from the Amazonians, who I have gotten Prime because, you know, they've got the Prime Day sales, and I was like, all right, I'll, I'll do that, you know. Why not? Um, turned out it was a freebie because I've gotten a new uh, debit card. Uh, so... I got a free account, which is great. Uh, so I bought some Blu-rays, so those will come in soon. Uh, but I also bought some stuff for a friend for her birthday. So uh, I'm not going to tell you what that is, just in case she watches the video. She won't, but just in case. Anyway, we got Endless Love. Man, that, that is not in the right kind of context. Anyway, I got Endless Love from Shout Select, which is from a new 2K scan. Uh, and it comes with... I think it's the second feature there that I is why I bought it. Feature length commentary by Lee Gambin. Also comes with three interviews and an archival interview with actress Shirley Knight and the photo gallery. So that's nice. Um, I will note for a interview with um, Brooke Shields about her career in Prince release of Pretty Baby. Very good because when I met the guy who is the you know director of content, he when they got their crew to do the interview with her, because they always said, you want, you're not going to get an interview with Brooke Shields, she ain't going to talk about this kind of stuff. And he said to the, to the interview people, don't mention, like, basically the film. Just talk about her career. Show some respect, you know? <laughs> and they were respectful, and apparently she really liked it. And it's a good interview. Uh, not on this release, but that's an important release for Pretty Baby, which is a very good release. So yeah, I got this. I only got it for the commenta uh, for the uh, commentary by Lee, but you know I've heard good things and it was oh, cheap enough on Amazon at the time. So yeah, ironically, it wasn't. It was actually dearer now on Amazon during the Prime Day sale than it was when I bought it, which is funny. And the creme de la creme, the final, the piece de la resistance. Of all things, I do still have more mail coming in. I've got stuff from Cinemaniacs uh, that should be due in a week and a half, hopefully. Um, and, of course, the Amazon stuff. And I've done pre-orders for Second Sight and for Severin for their sale. I don't know how much of the original clip I'm going to keep in, which is where I talked about that stuff, because I'd already finished filming the fucking video, but it was, like, 12 minutes long. So, anyway. I got Mummy Dearest from Paramount Presents. Uh... Yeah, because the $2 Blu-ray in, in, at JB was a piece of shit, and I didn't want to buy it. So I felt like I should watch the film first, and so I did. I actually saw it at the Cinemaniacs, uh, which is wonderful. I just realized it's double shrink-wrapped. Shit. Because uh, <laughs> the slip cover was shrink-wrapped as it is. It's a new 4K scan, comes with a slew of special features, including um, a slew of commentaries as well, including one by John Waters, which is wonderful. Um, I don't have many Paramount Presents. This is, I think, the second one I have. My dad had bought one for, like, the Court Jester, because that was a new 4K restoration. But it does come with that whole poster, uh, which is really nice. Um, I really, really like this film. Uh, I had waited till the screen at the Cinemaniacs to buy this release, and it's just pretty standard underneath. But I really liked it. Uh, my friend Caitlin had presented it, so I was... I didn't know what to expect in a way, but I found it to be really funny and it was really, enter really entertaining. 
like a good drama, but a good comedy as well, unintentional or not, but you know, what comedic thing is intentional outside of actual comedies? So yeah, it just comes with a basic case underneath, which I imagine that someday they'll probably release this separately. Um, oh, if anyone would like, oh my god, there's two, there are two digital codes. What the crap? Um, okay. <laughs> There are two digital codes, so uh, here's one, because I don't use digital codes, so for whomever wants it, that is your digital code, go ahead and take it. And second digital code for the next person, whoever wants it, can take it. There you go, 10 out of 10. Two digital codes. That cannot be on purpose. Um, they are two different codes as well, so that is very strange, but I will, I will take it, um, or at least whoever watches this can uh but yeah so film and special features i think it's region a on the disc it doesn't actually i'm uh, pretty sure it's stipulated somewhere did it not stipulate it does not stipulate it might be all regions which would be really nice i don't really mind i have an all region player but yeah so of course it does have pictures inside ah there you go that's that's a better one the show oh let's not blind the camera there we go so yeah not a bad release. Um, probably the best one that's currently available, potentially for the foreseeable future, unless they release a 4K UHD, which I don't know if it's really a film that begs for a 4K UHD. Um, I can't say I'm a huge fan of these... That almost slid all the way through. I can't say I'm a huge fan of these overly decorative uh, sleeves, but, you know, I'll take what I can get, you know? It still is... It's still not bad. It's, you know, it just would have been nicer if it was alternate artwork inside instead, instead of the wallpaper, but I do like the wallpaper, so. Anyway, that's all for this week. Um, yeah, obviously there's more to be expected uh, when the Severance, I mean, the Severance and the Second Side stuff won't come in for another month or two anyway, so. Yeah, but I've still got some Amazon stuff, so we'll see how that goes. Anyway, thanks for watching. Uh, see you kids next time um, when stuff happens. Bye.